What's going on, y'all? This is Mike Brown, and I just wanted to welcome you to this week's episode of The Art of Letting Go. I appreciate everybody that's been listening. Welcome to the new listeners. Also, shout out to y'all for leaving feedback, posting on your social media, tagging me to it, letting me see that y'all been listening. I really appreciate that. Uh, while I got your attention, if you could please subscribe to this podcast wherever you listen to it like it share it it would be so appreciated welcome to the show yo what up this is mike brown and this is the art of letting go i have a special guest in the building um i want to say we met at an event where i don't know if you were speaking yeah yeah so we met at a show I think that the LGBT Center was putting on. Yes, we did. Yep. Yes, yes. And I think he spoke and then we just started talking there. Yeah. I was like in 2019, I think, which is crazy. And it might it might have been about 2019. Um, yeah, I think so. So I, cause I do want to talk about that. But before we go there, do you mind introducing yourself to the people? Of course. What's going on? My name is Vince the Alien, and uh, I'm an artist. I'm from L.A. I'm a singer-songwriter, and yeah, I do music. <laughs> I sing a lot of songs, and I do a lot of harmonies in the songs, so uh, I'm Vince the Alien, so what up? Oh, thank you. I appreciate it. I appreciate it. I feel like sometimes people are like, what genre would you call yourself? And I think I would, I was like, oh, like kind of like alternative R&B or as the Grammys are now calling it, progressive r and I don't know. I make music that's very soulful with a bunch of harmonies. <laughs> so that's, that's what I make. <laughs> yeah, no, yeah, I, yeah. That, that event was dope because, uh, shout out to Martell. Um, mm-hmm. It was, I think it was for like LGBT youth that, that were trying to get into music or something like that. And yeah. <clears throat> I remember like yeah it was a really great experience yeah I remember connecting with a lot of those kids and them just telling me like there weren't many LGBT artists that are out there like for them to have somebody as a not even necessarily a role model but just somebody to see as an example of doing what they do and um yeah I remember seeing you perform and it was it was just very like just everything about your music and just your performance, it was very well put together. And, oh, thank um, you. Of course. But how has your journey been as a LGBT artist? Um, I mean, it's definitely, I would say it's been more of a mental struggle than an actual struggle of like people rejecting me as a result of being gay I think it was really me just needing to get out of my own way and not being fearful of um being out and writing music about boys (laughs) and writing music about my relationships with men and you know, the intimate aspects of that and also the emotional impacts and all those types of things. I think it was really me having to go through this journey of allowing myself to be, hey, like, this is who I am and it is what it is and I'm going to write music, you know, and it's an aspect of it because it's my experience. But I do think um, the way that I look at my music, at least, is I feel like it's a very, um, they're always like very universal feelings. You know, I talk a lot about like heartbreak and trying to find out, trying to figure out who you are and trying to grapple with the difference between love and lust and like trying to figure out what that is for me. And I think we across the board as human beings deal with that. So I think allowing myself to be more open and being allowing myself to be more vulnerable. um, I think that was the wall that I needed to break because I was attaching the idea of like, people aren't going to enjoy this because you're a gay man. When it's like, no, that's not the situation. It's like, people aren't going to enjoy this because they enjoy it, (laughs) you know? So it's really me getting out of my own way. No, I I definitely feel that. And I feel like that is what held me back a lot in music. Mm -hmm. Because even though I wasn't really putting like relationships and stuff in my music, but just the idea in my mind, in my own mind, 
you know, of being an openly gay man and rapping. Because I, I think something that still stands out to my, in my mind to this day is Snoop Dogg saying that a gay rapper would never be successful. Mm -hmm. And, mm -hmm. you know, it's somebody I've looked up to my entire life. So to hear him say that, before you, it used to give me that fear, like maybe, maybe I might not be able to do this, but now in my life it's like, I'm here to prove that shit wrong. You know what I'm no, for real, <laughs> for real. And I think the lucky thing that we have at this point is like, I do think that there are a lot of great examples of queer artists that may not be on like a Beyonce level, but like they like have made a path for themselves and really have done that shit. And it's like really great, especially seeing a lot of queer, like people of color, yeah. like artists who are just out here doing what they want to do and like living their lives and you know I think about when you're talking about hip-hop because I, I feel like hip-hop is is difficult because of the way that queer people are represented in hip-hop and I'm so thankful to think about like Cakes the Killer and like um <clears throat> I mean Big Dippa like yeah. all these artists that are out there just like doing their thing it's really beautiful to see and they're like unapologetic about it. <laughs> yeah, and, and the funny thing about it is hip hop was built off authenticity. So it's like, mm -hmm. who's more authentic than a gay rapper? <laughs> 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 That's real. <laughs> you don't get no more real than somebody living in the truth than that, so. No, it, that's definitely true. It, it, it definitely motivates me and inspires me. Um, Man, how are you doing today? I am doing pretty good. <laughs> you know, I took this past four days off. Um, you know, besides my music, I have a full-time job and it is a lot. <laughs> um, <clears throat> I'm like a manager for a company that's based out of LA and it's a lot. Um, you know, and I find myself sometimes feeling a bit overwhelmed and kind of putting a lot of pressure on myself to really succeed in that position while also trying to find balance. And I think a couple of weeks ago, I just kind of hit a wall where I was like, I need to take a break. Like, yeah. <laughs> I'm taking on too much. And I think having these last four days off has been nice because it's also giving me the opportunity to sit down and actually like really focus on music. <clears throat> I've had to grapple with like a few emotions of, you know, being fearful of change because there's a part of me that wants to do a little bit of change, like career wise. And it's a little scary to kind of adjust into. Yeah. But I think today at this present moment, I'm feeling pretty like calm and grateful for the day. Um, I did a little bit of planting earlier. So <laughs> that was very calming. But no, overall, like I'm feeling I'm feeling good in this moment, which I'm thankful for. How about you? How are you feeling? I'm feeling good. Um, today is a day off for me. So I went to a park earlier and just kind of read and I that like to write a lot. So taking some time to write and just um just really feeling out the day and you know, just kind of giving myself that recharge. Cause I know when I get back to work, I have to give a lot of energy. So kind of takes mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah it's so hard to allow yourself to do it sometimes I mean I don't know if you struggle with that but I definitely am like sometimes my mind will be thinking about a million things I'm like I literally have to say like Vincent stop <laughs> like allow yourself to relax it is okay you know you don't have to be productive every single day yeah I've been, I've been taking time on the weekends to just take time to just be um Okay. because I, I feel like I'm the same way my mind is moving so fast I'm moving so much that I have to take a moment to just rest and pause because if I don't you know I feel like I'm it's almost like the car the car runs out of gas and I and I know what it feels like to run out of gas so I'm just yeah mindful of it it ain't fun <laughs> <laughs> and, yeah no it's important yeah I brought you on the show today because you made a post that spoke to me pretty loud. Um, and I feel like it's something that's not really talked about just in the world in general. And kind of going back to what you were saying about your music, like 
you express what every human feels and what everybody, you know, whether you're gay, straight, whatever, man, woman, you go through, you experience these things. And mm -hmm. your post was about, you know, body insecurity and like just trying to build body positivity within yourself. And I feel like yeah. a lot of men don't really talk about that, but we all subscribe to it in our own ways, you know, like, yeah. I, as I was telling you earlier, like I used to feel a lot of shame in being skinny because both men and women would make fun of me for being skinny. So I was like, all right, I got to go to the gym and try to get bigger, but I would never get bigger. And, mm -hmm. you know, being around people that were just, you know, naturally fit, it, it used to make me feel insecure about myself, you know, but um, I would love to know, like, like what made you open up about your experience with it? I mean, I think realistically, I think I had spent so long as a, as the pandemic is, it's not, of course, the pandemic is not over, but as it's starting to kind of see, we're starting to see a little bit light at the end of the tunnel. Like I started just thinking about a lot about like, okay, these pants don't fit <laughs> like they did at the beginning of 2020 or like I'm gain I've gained some weight and I was being so negative in my head about my body. And that's not something new. Like that's something, as I kind of mentioned in the post, like that's something I've always really struggled with. Not always, but since I was like, I would say maybe like 11 or 12, you know, in junior high just having a negative outlook about my body. And, <clears throat> you know, those voices were getting really loud for, I would say, a good, like, month and a half, two months. And so a part of me was thinking, like, I know I'm not the only person that is going through this. And so I just was like, you know what? I'm just going to post this photo of me <laughs> in my underwear with my tummy out, like, and talk about, like, how... I'm struggling with this body image, you know? And it also was like a bit of a reflection for myself too. Similar to what you're saying about going to the, to the park and like writing. It was like this idea of, I need to write out my feelings. And now this gives me something that I can look back on and kind of reread when I need to check myself and I get those negative thoughts in my head again. Yeah. And so it was nice. I really posted it just kind of like, in a journalistic way for myself, a self-reflection way. And also because I knew a couple of my friends had been dealing with it too. And it was great to have, you know, all these people reach out to and kind of tell their stories as well and share their stories with me and let me know how they're feeling. Because I think a lot of times we feel like we're going through these things by ourselves, but in, re in reality, there's so many people that are going through the same thing. And you brought up a point around like men and our body image, I think especially whether straight or queer, but I think as queer men like we're inundated with these hot bodies all day like <laughs> instagram is just like shooting us hot guys all day and their yeah. bodies this and their bodies that and it's just like it plays a trick on your brain and, and constantly like it's telling you in some small way like you're not good enough or you're not quite there yet or you're not the the image that you're supposed to be and i think i also just wanted to be like look this is how i look <laughs> and a lot of people look like this <laughs> and we need to be better to ourselves where do you feel like where do you feel like the shame comes from in that? Like, at, at least for you, where do you feel like your, your earliest part of it came from? That's a great question. I mean, realistically, my, you know, my family overall has kind of struggled with weight. Um, <clears throat> and I think a lot of my shame came from being a kid and not really understanding who I was as a queer person and similar, like still getting kind of inundated with those images of like really buff guys or like really hot guys or, and also on a race level too. Like most of the images that I was seeing growing up of queer men were like white men who are really in shape. And there was not like a diversity of, of people of color or a diversity of like what is beautiful. Um, <clears throat> and I think those just kind of like played a lot of thoughts or, or, or ended up being like little records, like playing on repeat in my head as a kid. Um, and also, you know, my older cousins, my older, my oldest male cousin 
cousin that's right under me. They were pretty fit, you know, and they made fun of me as a kid. Like, they, I don't think they had a malicious intent, but it played in my head, you know, and also being in junior high and being made fun of as a chubby kid and, you know, people saying silly things about my weight. I think that just kind of played this part in my mind. <clears throat> it played a part in my, in the negative image that I had of myself. Um, and similar to like what you're saying about being skinny and not being, not knowing how to change that. I think that played this thought too of like, why isn't this changing? Like, why am I still this short chubby kid in junior high? <laughs> and why can I get this chub off me? <laughs> so I think it just like continued to play this, this thought and like created this idea of shame. And then as I got older, you know, I kind of, like I mentioned in the post, I went up and down with my weight. Um, and I think that even though I was getting smaller, at one point I was like really in shape and I think those voices still stuck with me. Um, and it was hard to like kind of quiet them. Yeah. How do you deal yeah. with them now? I mean, <clears throat> I think a lot of it, similar to what you're saying, is like writing. Yeah. You know, um, I've been writing a lot of music lately for this, you know, it will either be an EP or a bunch of singles, but for this project that I'm just kind of working on. And, <clears throat> you know, one of the songs is, uh, it's called Saint Love, Saint Lust, Saint Self-Confidence. And the song is about me talking about like, why can't I be beautiful? Like, why can't I allow myself to believe that I am beautiful? Um, so I think a lot of that has to do with me like sitting down and writing music. I think also just, talking about it yeah I think that's the most important thing I think like you said whether gay straight whatever like I think we all have these issues and we keep them inside especially as men yeah you know people identify as men like as male like I think we keep those things inside and don't really talk about that internal struggle around our bodies because there are, like, similar to your story, there are so many men who are like, I'm so skinny and I just want to bulk up. Or the opposite, like, I'm super overweight and I just really want to lose this weight. I want to feel good when I'm at the beach or, you know, like, <clears throat> and I think talking about it has really helped me to at least, like, express it and then just remind myself, like, hey, day by day, like, your body is where it is right now and you have and something that I read was like your body is where it is right now and it's important for you to learn to accept your body where it is but also recognize that there is room for change but don't like kill yourself trying to like beat yourself up trying to make that change because it does take time yeah and I'm glad you mentioned acceptance because yeah. I, I was going to ask about that but also something that helped me in acceptance was a friend telling me that this is the youngest and most beautiful that you'll ever be. So embrace it. Mm. And I think about that a lot. At every age, I think about it because I, I heard this in my 20s, but you know, now being 34, it's like, mm. this is the best it's gonna look at this age. So I might as well embrace it and accept it for what it is. Um, during the quarantine, I grew yeah. up- <laughs> for I grew out my hair for about five or six months. And I'm, I'm used to getting a haircut mm -hmm. like every two weeks or something like that. But to find beauty in myself while not having a mm -hmm. haircut, like let me know, like you're still the same person, whether your hair is cut, whether it's not, whether you're skinny, whether whatever you are, you are still <coughs> the same person in that body. That's real, that's real. That's a good lesson. Because I think that was kind of a part of my acceptance too but just like at the end of the day like I'm still like you said like, I'm still like the same person like I'm still breathing I'm still alive I'm still being able to create you know I'm still being productive um in the ways that I would like to be productive in some ways I would like to be more productive but but yeah like <clears throat> that definitely has helped me to just to be like hey like you got to embrace where you are right now yeah. Um, and love it, you know, cause like you said too, I'm, I'm about to turn 35 and it's been, that's been another part of the struggle too, of like getting older 
and like allowing myself to remember like yo you're still young like <laughs> you're not 80 <laughs> like like you still have so much life ahead of you and you have to enjoy that you know day by day like you like you said like where you where you are you know because it ain't forever <laughs> It's not. And I feel like we are always looking at somebody else's scale of how to mm-hmm. how to judge ourselves. Like where where do we fall on the beauty scale? Where do we fall on the you know the the weight scale? Like where just where do we sit in this standard of beauty? And I don't know. Something I I thought to ask you was like what what advice would you give to like just the youth? I was going to say LGBT, mm-hmm. but youth in general about like really embracing who they are. Yeah. I mean, I realistically feel like, I know this sounds super cliche, but honestly, I think just like be authentic to who you are. I think right now that it's so easy to, and this isn't a judgment on any level, I think it's easy to kind of get caught up in like the Instagrams and the TikToks and like who's like blowing up right now and getting their moment of fame, you know, based off of something maybe going viral or something being funny. Um, <clears throat> and I think it's easy for young people at the age of 11 up to like our age to think about, oh, hey, like how can I change myself or become something that I'm not particularly, like that's not true to who I am in order to try to achieve this thing. And I think in that process, I think we lose a lot of our authenticity, trying to become like carbon copies of someone else because they may have become the thing that we envisioned for ourselves. So my advice would be like, just continue to be authentic to yourself, like be open to change, be malleable, like be open to, you know, if I want to be doing something different, like maybe, or if I, if I have this vision in my head and it's not going exactly the way I want down this path, like be open to maybe shifting that path and trying something different. Um, and that's a lesson I'm still learning too. But I think that's like an important one. So it's like be authentic, be open to change, but at the end of the day, like continue to be you. Because you're you, like I, I don't need like, 5,000 Kim Kardashians. <laughs> Nothing against Kim Kardashian, but I don't need 5,000 of them. <laughs> yeah, that's real. Yeah. Oh, I wanted to talk about your music a little bit too, because uh, yeah, please. I know that you made the transition, because I think when I met you, I don't think you were going by Vince the Alien. How did you no, I was going by Vincent. <laughs> yeah. How did you- I think I just... Oh, sorry, sorry, go ahead. Where is that? Cut you off. That's all good. I was, I was just asking, how did you become the alien? Um, I th- you know, I think I just, I wanted some change. You know, I think I had, so prior to me doing solo stuff, I was in a band. I was in like a prog rock, like Incubus slash Nine Inch Nelly band. Oh, wow. <laughs> and I was the lead singer for it. And it was an amazing time, really great experience. And I think out of that, I came straight into like going as my birth name, you know, and it was a lot of fun. And I kind of experimented with different sounds, trying to figure out who I was and what I wanted to do sound wise. And I think, you know, I wanted some change. I, I sat down and I just had this vision of like this entire universe. Um, and it just, honestly, the name just like came to me. And I started thinking a lot about, um, you know, feeling ostracized as a kid, you know, feeling different, um, being made fun of a lot, you know, as a person of color for like not fitting in or, you know, as a queer person, all those kind of feelings, not feeling like I fit in very closely with my family. Um, and I think that I've always kind of resonated with this idea of like being alien or being from another like universe. <laughs> like I remember when I was a kid, I used to watch Roswell. Like <laughs> I've probably seen that series like 50 times. 
And same thing with Buffy. Like I've seen that like 50 million times. And I like kind of resonated with this idea of kind of feeling a little bit out, like left of center, um, but still trying to, you know, fit in, trying to be understood, trying to be seen. Um, and I think that all just kind of inspired Vince the Alien. Um, and I love it. I mean, it's been really amazing. It's given, it, it really opened, it opened up another part of my creativity and really allowed me for the first time in my solo career to really like own it. Like I was like, I own this, I created this. I know exactly what I want to do with this. I know the sound that I want, like, and I can just hit the ground running. Whereas I feel like prior to that change, I was still kind of all over the place. And some, I had a lot of connections in rock who were still trying to push me to the rock end. And I'm like, no, I want to do this, but I was still kind of all over the place. And it was really nice to sit down, have that vision, be like, whoa, I got it. Like, this makes sense to me now. That's what's up. Do you feel like you get to be your full self in your music? Yeah, I, I definitely feel like I do. I definitely feel like I do. It's It's been nice to... It's been nice, like I said, to kind of own it and know exactly what I want to sing about. You know, what... what what I want to share with other people, which is a lot about, like I was saying about lust and about love and trying to understand what that is and trying to figure out who you are as a human being. Um, Tapping into like intimacy and sexuality and emotions and all those types of things, but in a way that's like packed with a bunch of harmonies, like I was saying. Um, And I definitely feel like, you know, I've got a really, great opportunity of being able to just be authentic to who I am as an artist That's nice. um, and also another and tap into another side of me that I was like not tapped into prior yeah what do you feel like is your biggest challenge right now as an artist <laughs> having a job <laughs> I mean I'm very grateful for my job <laughs> but I'm a hard worker and I think it has been very hard, like just finding that balance (laughs) of working and having to be responsible and having expectations for my full-time job and also finding the time to just really be creative. Um, I think honestly though, like even though 2020 2020 was like a very difficult year and it's, it's sad to think Though it's nice to be able to see this light at the end of the tunnel, it is sad to think about the amount of families that have lost somebody, you know, during this time. There's so many people that passed. Yeah. And it's sad to, like, think about that. Um, but, but in addition to that, like, I think 2020 gave me the opportunity to, like, stop for a second. Because I think I was being so go, go, go with music that... I needed to stop for a second and kind of get re-inspired and really deal with some feelings and some emotions that I didn't have the time or the space to deal with prior to 2020. So I think, I think it's been nice to, even though work is hard and it takes a lot of my time, I think 2020 also allowed me to be okay with taking a moment of just being like, you know what, I need to rest and not force myself to write a bunch of stuff. Just let me like live, <laughs> let me live my life for a bit. And then like, when it comes to you, like it'll come to you. And it's been coming to me for the past like four or five weeks. And it's been really, a really amazing feeling. Yeah. You know? That's what's up. Yeah, I think that was my biggest mm-hmm. lesson too, because it, mm-hmm. it was a minute that I felt like if I wasn't doing nothing, I wasn't, you know, I felt worthless not doing anything. And I was like, no, you have to mm-hmm. take the time to just be, and even being an artist, like as you live in your life, like you creating your life, you know? So yeah, yeah. Like looking at every opportunity as as an opportunity to create, it's like. Okay, so when I'm when I'm decorating my place, I'm creating. When I'm doing this, I'm creating. Mm-hmm. Take all of that back to what you do, and it, it inspires new things. So I think, yeah, that's dope. New experiences do ex- inspire a lot of new creativity. Yeah, no, definitely. I mean, I think about it like I was I was saying um, 
um, before the podcast, like we, I did some planting earlier and I've been like an avid uh, plant dad <laughs> for like a cool minute now. And it's been really nice. I think about this a lot actually about the aspect of like plants go dormant from like December to March or like November to March. Like they don't grow anything. They completely hold on to their energy. They're like waiting until March to do anything. And I think about that a lot from the perspective of like us as human beings, I don't think we have been taught to give ourselves the opportunity to be like that plant and just be like, yo, like I need to reserve my energy for a second. (laughs) And then like allow newness to come when it comes, as opposed to feeling like we have to be constantly productive. Every, and, I, and I think it's an aspect of like our culture in general, you know, Instagram gives you that where you constantly have to be creating content. It gives you that pressure. You know, there's so many articles from like the CEO of Spotify who mention like artists should be coming out with songs every six weeks. And it's just like, dude, like, <laughs> Can I, can I breathe? (laughs) You know, so I think there's so much pressure that makes us feel external and internal that makes you feel like I need to be constantly doing something. It's like, no, sometimes you need to allow yourself to just breathe and like not have to feel those pressures of fulfilling everything in one moment. Yeah. And I, I appreciate you sharing that because like nobody really pulls back the curtain of what it means to like truly be an artist. Like like you say, looking at Instagram, people make it look like it's just grind, 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 grind. And I'll mm-hmm. be honest, even like pre-pandemic, like your social media appeared that way as well, where it was like, man, like he is always doing something. Mm-hmm. And, you know, for somebody like that is, is on their journey or coming up, like it could look like, damn, I'm not doing enough because I'm not doing what he's doing. I'm not doing what that person's doing. So you expressing that, like, I really appreciate you sharing that because I I try to share that as well. Like, yeah, it may look a certain way online, but also don't get it confused. I may have done enough work to be able to hold on to my energy during those times when I need it. Yeah, no, definitely. (laughs) That's real. No, I mean, I feel you because I look at artists too and I'm like, man, they are constantly putting out videos and singing and like I'm just like dang like <laughs> what am I doing and it's so funny here you say that because I, I feel that way <laughs> yeah. um but no I mean it's true I think you hit it on the head where it's like don't don't believe the hype like at the end of the day like yeah I'm I will give my I will acknowledge that I work hard when I work hard but I also am dealing with like depression at times during those times and trying to figure out like is this even worth it? Like, do people care about this? Like all those voices that we hear as artists, um, like that stuff, that stuff creeps in too. And I think that plays a part too with, you know, why I posted that post as well. Cause it was like, I think, you know, it's important for us to be vulnerable with each other because we're all human beings and we all are going through these things. And it's unfair to make it seem as if like, that part of us doesn't exist. Um, And only this like kind of perfect, I'm doing music all the time or I'm traveling all the time or I'm happy all the time. Like, that's just like not real. (laughs) And that's no hate on anyone that just puts that out there. Like if that's you, do you. But it's like, it is also important to remind each other and ourselves, like we're human beings and this shit is not easy. (laughs) At all, at all. I got a couple of more questions for you and then I have Yeah, please. Um what is one piece of advice that you would give to your younger self? Mm, that's, good. <laughs> that's good. Um one day you will believe in yourself. <laughs> I think as a kid, I did not really believe in myself very much. Um, I think what I think, yeah, I think it'll be like one day you'll believe in yourself and one day you'll be seen. Because I think as a kid, I didn't feel very seen. You know, I felt like very kind of ostracized, felt very kind of glazed over. And, And my family is an amazing family. My family is like full of love, full of like, building each other up but I think 
not really understanding myself as a kid. There was an aspect of me that ostracized my own self, not knowing it as a kid. And then there was also a part of my family not understanding me that also ostracized me. And so I think it really made me feel not seen or heard or understood or and, and ultimately not believing in, in myself. And so um, I would definitely tell that little chubby 11 year old, <laughs> like one day you believe in yourself and you'll be good, kid. <laughs> That's really dope. That's really dope. How about you? I'm curious what you would tell your younger self. Today, what I would tell my younger self is, um, what would I tell myself today? Keep going, keep asking questions and keep learning. Mm. And you're going you're gonna to keep finding out more of what you want to know. So keep going and you're going to keep finding out more about yourself than anything. Because I think I've always been you know, kind of an alien as well. And just always try to figure out Mm -hmm. what is my place in this world? Where do I fit? Because, you know, so many people throw so many different things on you, so many different boxes on you. It's like, yeah, I connect to all these individual things, but for all of these things to make me up, what the fuck is this? So Mm -hmm. I would tell myself like, just keep digging, keep, keep going and keep finding, keep wanting to learn more and know more. I love that. I love that. What is a reminder? Especially about the boxes. That's good. Yeah. <laughs> you know, I, I, I think about that a lot, you know, because I have to be a man. I have to be black. I have to be gay. Mm-hmm. Have to be all of these things. And it's like, but what if I just want to be Mike one day? Right, right, right. right. Like it's, it's, no, it's, that's it's, real. Pressure fitting, fitting into all of these spaces, like, can I just be Mike and be all of these things, you know? Mm-hmm. That's real. And and also, like, uh, like, have other people allow you to be you, and regardless, you know? I, I, feel, I feel you on that. It's a difficult one, because I, I struggle with that sometimes, too, where, you know, I think growing up, I was, like, a, I was definitely an empath, and I think, <clears throat> you know, I had a lot of friendships in my 20s that were sometimes a bit draining because they would like you know ask me for a lot of of advice or pull a lot from me and it wasn't always reciprocated and you know I found myself feeling as my therapist said he's like what ends up happening is like you end up giving so much of yourself to people because you have a good heart and because you care about people but then you end up finding yourself feeling empty, which ends up making you feel lonely. And I remember my therapist telling me that and I was like, bawling. <laughs> I was like, stop telling me about myself. But, <laughs> but like, it was so good to hear because it really allowed me to like understand that I don't always have to be that person. Like that's not the role that I always have to play. Like sometimes I can just be Vincent and like, chill. Yeah you know, and like find the balance of it. And also set those boundaries with other people too, of like, no, like, look, I'm being Vincent today. <laughs> like, <laughs> I'm not being empath, helping you out with everything Vince today. <laughs> I think that's something I learned during the pandemic because uh, I can definitely relate to that. And when you are really going through your own shit, like sometimes you have to, sometimes you have to express to people like, I don't have the, the space for this I don't have the mental Mm -hmm. capacity for it and it could feel hard especially when and not not even for them but for you for being in that role long it could feel hard but I think with repetition and practice the more you do it the more comfortable you'll get and I've got and I'm not gonna say I'm just like I'm just perfect I'm there but right right When I do feel myself getting sucked into something and I'm not and I don't feel in the space for it I have to express it And what I'm starting to tell myself, the more I tell myself is like me expressing my truth. If it's my truth, I can't, I can't worry about how my truth makes someone else feel. So if I tell you that Mm -hmm. I don't have the space to take this on and you get mad at me, that says more about you than it does about me. No, that's real. That's definitely real. And like you said, that's a hard journey to go on, but it's so important such a like it's so important to be able to say look no I don't have it right now 
and it's, it has nothing to do with you. I just realistically just don't have the space right now. Yeah. Um, you know, and hopefully people will be more receptive to that. Um, but yeah, now I agree with you. It's it's really about if they if they're processing it like that. Maybe they need to talk to my therapist too. I don't know, <laughs> but yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, I feel you. <laughs> That's funny. Um, what is a reminder you would like to give to your future self? Mm, shit. <laughs> shit. Um, <laughs> I think I think a reminder I would like to give my future self. I thought about the first thing that came to my mind specifically was thinking about when I am going to release this mu- this new music. And then that's not like too, too far in the future. It is in the future. And I think I would like to remind myself at that moment, like remember how much you enjoy creating these songs. Because I think, like I was saying, like there's so many times where I'm overwhelmed by work. I'm like exhausted from work. And I feel like I don't have the energy to continue to be creative or write this song or sit down and edit these stems and these vocals and these tracks for this thing. And then, you know, last week I sat down and listened to the songs and I started crying. Cause I was like, like you, you did this and like you enjoy doing this, like listening to this and listening to these harmonies, like this is what you love about music. So the reminder would be like, remember that moment when you actually like sat down, listened to the songs and you felt so great about them and you remember the process of creating them and how much you just loved singing and like creating these crazy ass harmonies. <laughs> and like, that's the shit that you love. So just like, remember that instead of all of the other stuff that comes along with it, that really isn't always in your control. Yeah, yeah, of course. Mm-hmm. Of course. I, I appreciate that because I, I feel like I needed to hear that as well today. So thank you. Mm. We got each other. <laughs> <laughs> My last question is, what is next for Vince the Alien? Um, I definitely am going to be putting out some music. Um, my plan is to start putting it out in 2022. I want to really give myself, like I'm committing to like, you're giving yourself six months prior to releasing a song to like really plan this out, take your time, not rush it. Cause in the past, I think sometimes I can rush it cause I'm just so excited and I don't give myself the opportunity to like really dive in. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> so I think that is the most, that's like the biggest thing for me right now is just, you know, putting out, some new music. I also just recorded a, um, like, I guess you could say like a behind the scenes, like talk. What are those things called? Like people talk over their albums. Well, I can't think of what they're called right now. Oh, the comment, commentary albums. Yeah. Like I did a commentary version for Combustion, which is my oh, EP. Really so I'm excited about that. Um, but yeah, basically just like more music. And I plan on putting out like a poetry book too. Um, I put one out already. It's on Amazon and I'm going to put out a new one, which I'm super excited about. Uh, but yeah, those are next. So more, just more creative stuff, but it'll, it'll come in time. I want to take my time with this one. <laughs> that's dope. That's really dope. So my yeah. next thing. I'll send you a copy of the book too. <laughs> please, do, please do. And I, and I want to talk yeah. to you more about that. Cause uh, I've been working on a book and um haven't really figured yeah, out how to do it. Out, so I, I definitely would love to hear more about that. For sure. So my next segment is called Five Questions of Freedom. So I'm going to ask you five questions and you can- I'm excited. That sounds intriguing. <laughs> okay. So my first question is dead or alive, who would you like to work with? Anybody. <laughs> That's a good question. I feel like I, I feel like I'm a laundry list, but um, if I could go into the studio right now, is it okay if it's like multiple people? Of course, yeah. Okay, cool. So I would have Trent Reznor, who's from um, from Nine Inch Nails. Um, 
Bilal. Okay. Wow. Um, <laughs> I Solange. Love I love me some Bilal. Solange. Um, and there's an artist named Royson Murphy. She's one of my favorite artists of all time. And the last person that would be really random is Post Malone. I think <laughs> if I got all five of those people in the studio, like it would be a very interesting <laughs> sound. <laughs> and that that intrigues me. There's like an experimental, there's an experimental artist, there's like a soul artist, there is like a museum soulji artist. There's Post Malone who just like writes really good pop hits. And then Trent Reznor, who is like amazing. So I think that would be so much fun to work on. I would love to hear what that would sound like. <laughs> Me too. <laughs> That'd be great. Beyonce or Rihanna? Oh, damn. It's like that. <laughs> Yo, you're going to get me in trouble. Um, <laughs> okay, I'm going to give... Oh, damn, this is hard. This is hard. Um, I think I would have to say Rihanna has more hits. Damn. Probably, probably Beyonce. Okay. But that's a hard question. Like that, I feel like most people feel like that should be like a strong yes, but it's not. <laughs> it's a hard question. Because I'm thinking about it from like, what albums do I like? What era do I want to enjoy from them? So yeah, that's a hard one. I feel like that question has been hard to everybody on that so far. <laughs> yeah, it's a difficult one. Live, I would rather see Beyonce. Okay. I've seen both of them. Yeah. And I would rather see Beyonce live. <clears throat> okay. That's what's up. Uh, what is the first thing you want to do when the pandemic is over? Hmm. Travel. I miss traveling. I try to like take one trip by myself. The last trip I took was to like out of the country was I went to London by myself um, and stay with a friend of mine that's out there. But I miss, I just really miss traveling. Like I really want to go, the top, top of my list are Japan, Italy, and Iceland. Like I want to go to those places so bad. So those are, those are the three places I am looking forward to traveling to. Okay, that's what's up. Yeah. What is one word you would use to describe yourself? Um. <laughs> Virgo. <laughs> okay. I mean, I'm not like a big astrolog. Like, I'm not super into astrology, but sometimes when people describe, I'm a Virgo, and so when my felt with my friends who are also Virgos, because I tend to end up getting super close to Virgos as well, when they describe some of their feelings and some of their thoughts and some of their struggles, I'm like, oh man, like maybe there's some truth to this shit because <laughs> I identify. It. So I would say uh, Virgo. Yeah, and I feel that too. Because sometimes I, like, I don't really read into it. But when people tell me about it, mm -hmm. I'm always like, okay, that's kind of <laughs> maybe it says something there. <laughs> what are you? What is your astrological sign? I'm a Libra. A Libra. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Um, it's so weird to my, not care about it, and then people tell you, and you're like, oh shit. <laughs> my, my sister is a Virgo, and my best friend is a Virgo. Okay. Yeah, so I, I connect well with Virgos. I like that. Good. <laughs> and my last question, well, this one is kind of like a fill in the blank, but my name is Vince the Alien, and if I wasn't an artist, I would be blank. Mm, damn, that's good. Um, if I wasn't an artist... When I think about like my dream outside of continuing to do music, I would really love to own a plant shop. 
So I think I would like the a hoarder culture <laughs> or <laughs> or like yeah like I would love to just own like a little half coffee shop bakery in the front and plant shop on the other half and just sell coffee connect with people in the community and just be like hey do you want to buy this monstera delicioso like <laughs> on your way out <laughs> that's like my dream <laughs> That would be really dope. Yeah. I mean, I hope that can happen as well as <laughs> continuing in the music right. too. So it's on my list for sure. That's what's up. How about you? I'm very curious. If I wasn't an artist, if I wasn't an artist, I would, damn, that's a good question. Um, like turn it around on you. <laughs> Want to ask the questions? No, if I if I wasn't, <laughs> I'd probably be a basketball player. Okay, I'd be a basketball player because I really enjoy the sport. But uh, yeah, I've, I've always or a comedian. I probably okay. Be a comedian. <laughs> Have you done stand up before? Never, never. I don't. Never. I don't think I'm that funny. I used to think I was funny, <laughs> <laughs> but I don't. I don't know if I'm, I'm that funny in my adult age. Okay. <laughs> I would love to see that. That'd be great. <laughs> we should just make it happen. <laughs> if, I, if, I, if I think about it, if I try it out, I'll definitely let you know. If I go to open my Okay, mic, please. <laughs> I'll just be in the back like, woo, yeah. <laughs> That's good. <laughs> just threatening everyone to laugh. <laughs> oh, that's funny. Vince, where can the people find you? Yes, yes. So you can find me on Instagram. It's Vince the Alien. You can check out my website, which is Vince the Alien dot space. Okay. <laughs> and um, you can find me. I got all my music on Spotify. It's on Apple Music. It's on Tidal. I think it's on Pandora. <laughs> uh, if people still use Pandora. <laughs> right. um, but yeah, definitely. Two Pandora users. I'm sure there's maybe one or two on here. You know, shout out to Pandora. <laughs> uh, give give a sponsorship to this podcast if you want right. to. <laughs> the art of letting go. His name is Mike hit him up, <laughs> and uh, <laughs> but yeah, you can find me on Instagram. Instagram is really the most. I I try Twitter. Uh, I'm not consistent enough. People have been trying to convince me to tic- to do TikTok. I don't have time. So <laughs> find me on Instagram and find me on Spotify. <laughs> I feel that. Vince, man, thank you so much for coming on the show. I really appreciate it. Of course. Coming. Thank of y'all. Of course. I feel very grateful that you asked me to. So thank you. Of course, man. Like you are you are very inspiring to me. Like everything that you do with music, like I said, I've always watched how you move in music and been like, damn, like he really doing it. And <laughs> like just seeing that post, it even like it just made you more human. I was like, we gotta connect and just talk. So I really appreciate you coming through. Of course, of course. Thank y'all for listening. This is Mike Brown, and this is The Art of Letting Go. Peace. Thank y'all for tuning into this week's episode of The Art of Letting Go. If you enjoyed what you heard, please be sure to subscribe to the podcast wherever you listen. Also, leave a comment. Let me know what you think. Let other people know what you think. Um, I got a phone line if y'all want to reach out. Hit me up. That number is 213-394-2773. Art of Letting Go Podcast. Website is coming soon where you could buy merch, support the podcast, all in one space. I know we got a lot of links everywhere, but thank y'all so much for tuning in, being here with me every week. I love y'all. I appreciate y'all. I'll see y'all next week. Peace. <laughs>